Welcome to WealthLab. Let's get right into it with an introduction of our strategy builder for WealthLab.com. We call it the web builder or just the builder. The builder has drag and drop building blocks that let you create and backtest trading strategies on WealthLab.com for free. It leverages all the power of WealthLab 7's backtest engine, and when you're ready to step up and subscribe to WealthLab 7 for the desktop, you'll be able to download and continue to use the strategies you create here. Let's go over the elements of the builder. The hamburger button acts like a file menu for saving and opening strategies. To use these features, you'll need to create a free account at WealthLab.com, so if you don't have one, please click Login and then sign up for free. Don't worry, we never sell email addresses and we won't spam you either. We will send you a monthly newsletter that you can opt out from receiving. The settings menu has the strategy backtest settings where you can specify the starting capital of a hypothetical account and the size of each position that the strategy trades. If you want the sizes to grow with the simulated equity of the backtest, it's best to use the percent of equity sizing. That way, when you double your account size, your position sizes will double too. For now, Web Builder backtests will use either daily data of the Dow 30 stocks or 60-minute intraday data for the most active crypto assets like Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, Ripple, and others. You can use the default benchmark symbol or type in your own. When you do your back tests, we'll run a separate buy and hold strategy on the benchmark symbol so that you can see if your strategy's performance beats buying and holding the benchmark. That brings us to the nuts and bolts of building a strategy. The workspace has four categories of intuitive building blocks in the left column, and to the right are the blocks that will eventually make up the strategy. When you start a new strategy, buy at market and sell at market blocks automatically appear. This is already a complete strategy that buys one day, sells the next, and so on. Your job is to make this more interesting by adding condition and qualifier blocks to this buy and sell rules. You have more options for entry and exit types, and the same strategy can even include multiple order types that have their own set of rules. But let's keep it simple for now and just use the market orders. The top six or seven conditions all refer to indicators. Indicators are the main tools in technical analysis, and we use combinations of their values and price patterns to predict what will happen next to the symbol that we're trading. One of the first and probably the most popular indicator is the simple moving average which is just an average of prices over the most recent 10, 50, or some number of bars of data. For our first strategy, we'll create the famous simple moving average crossover. Let's admit right now that this is probably not a great strategy to use in real trading, but it's certainly a good one to demonstrate how to build a strategy. Now the first three conditions are what we would call filter conditions. They compare indicators to other indicators or constant values. Filter conditions can persist as true or false for many consecutive bars, so you typically use them with other conditions like one of the next four. And these are the trigger type conditions. They're true in the instant that a crossing occurs or when an indicator series changes direction or makes a new high or low. So we typically use these to trigger trading actions. Let's see how we can use a combination of these conditions. Imagine that we want to go long only when the price is above the 200-day moving average. Price, open, high, low, close, and volume series are considered indicators too, so we drag and drop the indicator compared to indicator condition and click the properties icon to edit its parameters for the close to be above the 200-day moving average of closing prices. Now for the trigger condition. We'll want to go long when a fast moving average crosses a slower one. When you use a small number of periods in an indicator calculation, they react faster to price changes. Likewise, an indicator changes relatively slower when the number of periods in the calculation is greater. Because I like Fibonacci numbers, I'll use 8 and 21 for my fast and slow periods. A couple of notes here. First, notice that we have more than one condition for the buy at market signal. When you stack conditions like that, all of them must be true at the same time for the signal to occur. Second, I'm just guessing by picking the, the 8 and 21 period parameters. Other numbers may and probably will produce much better results, but how do you find what works best? We can't show you that in the web builder, but WealthLab 7 
has advanced optimization features that can find the best numbers for a backtest. Okay, let's get out of the long trade on the opposite crossing condition, being sure to pick the same periods that we used before. Now there's one more condition block I want to mention because it's important to getting repeatable results from a backtest. It's the transaction weight block. Transaction weight comes into play when you have more trade candidates than buying power. As an example, if we're using 10% of equity sizing with one-to-one -one margin, we can afford to hold only 10 positions. But if you're already holding 8 positions and get 5 more buy signals, which 2 of the 5 would you pick? Transaction weight gives the backtest in you a way to choose the trades based on some indicator value. For example, the symbols that have the lowest price, or in this case, the ones that are most oversold based on their 10 period RSI value. If we didn't use transaction weight, WealthLab would pick two of those five signals randomly in a backtest. Because of that trade randomness, the backtest results would change for every run. Okay, that's our complete strategy. Let's run the backtest on the Dow 30 for the last five years, starting with $50,000, and use 10% of equity sizes for positions and one-to-one -one margin. When the backtest completes, you'll see the equity curve that shows how the value of the simulated account progressed over the five years of trading the strategy. You can also click to the drawdown chart, which shows the percentage or dollar amount of how the account equity dips after it reaches a new high point. You can see that 10% dips are pretty common. Scrolling down, you're given tabular metrics for the strategy and also those for the benchmark buy and hold strategy. And in this case, there's plenty of work left to do to come up with a strategy to beat SPY, which is the ETF proxy for the S&P 500. Finally, at the bottom, we find a table of monthly returns. Monthly returns are simply the month-to-month -month percent changes in the equity curve. The signals view shows you the trades to enter on the next bar. Since we back-tested daily bars for the Dow 30, these are the trades to buy or sell at the open for the next market session. Finally, we have the positions view. Trades that are currently open don't have an exit date, but you can click the button to show just the open or closed trades. On the website, the lists are limited to just the last 100 positions. Remember, there can be many more trades than the ones shown here. Just check the metrics report for the actual position count for the backtest. If you want to make changes to the strategy, just click back to the Builder view and go for it. Let me quickly mention the qualifier blocks. These really open up the possibilities of unlimited ways to combine conditions. Taking the indicator symbol qualifier as an example, we'll drop it on the filter condition that has to be above the 200-day moving average to trade. Now this rule will only trigger a buy for any symbol if the QQQ is trading above its 200-day moving average. And last of all, save your strategy. We can't save your strategy for you if you don't have an account, so now would be a great time to sign up for free. Hey, thanks for visiting Wealth Lab, and we hope you enjoy using this tool. Thanks for coming.